Hello, I'm Sarah from South London Sling Library and today I'd like to talk to you about using the Ergo Baby All Position 360 Baby Carrier with the Infant Insert. I'm going to do this video in sections, um, so check the description below for the time stamps for the different sections. So if you need to skip a section and move on, then you can do that. <clears throat> First thing, I want to talk to you about not how to tell whether the carrier that you've got is the All Position 360 and therefore needs uh, um, an infant insert. The infant insert is also useful for some of the other um, Ergo Baby carriers, um, but the main thing is it's the carriers that don't have an adjustable seat. So this is an, uh, is an Ergo Baby All Position 360. This is the cotton version. So your carrier may look like this and have a Velcro waistband. <clears throat> it may be made of polyester with a mesh panel and have a buckle waistband. I think they also make them in cotton with a, button waist, with a buckle waistband. Um, but the key factor in both of these carriers, they're both um, all position 360s, they do not have an adjustable seat. So the seat, where the seat that the baby sits in and the waistband meet each other, it's all just fixed together. Um, and so any of the Ergo Baby carriers where the, waist, where the seat is not adjustable will need an infant insert if you're going to use it for a smaller baby. Um, what, where you don't need an infant insert is if you find the waistband of your carrier has Velcro tabs and they may be square like this, they may be shaped, the Adapt uh, has shaped Velcro tabs. So if you've got little bits of Velcro like this on your waistband and different sizes shown on the waistband, you do not need the infant insert because for a smaller baby, you just use the Velcro to make the seat smaller. So it doesn't need an infant insert. So if you have an Ergo Baby that does need an infant insert, it will not have those Velcro tabs at the waistband where the seat attaches to the waistband. Now we're going to look at how to put the infant insert into your carrier. The easiest way to do this is to find somewhere to lay the carrier down, either on a table, on the floor, on a sofa, something like that. So I'm going to do that first um, and then I'll show you how to attach the infant insert. Right, so here's my carrier laid out on my dining table and I'm just going to take the infant insert with the straps and I'm going to lay the insert on the inside of the carrier like that. Now you can see fairly obviously, these, these little tabs do up around these straps. So I'm gonna take that round there, pop it in, take that one round there and pop it in. And then these ones, take that one round there and do the popper up and then take that one around there and do the pop up. Now that is my infant insert attached to my carrier, no problem at all. You can then pick the whole thing up and it doesn't matter if this flaps around because it's all attached to the carrier. Right, so now let's put the carrier on. So I've got the carrier here with the infant insert attached. I'm gonna start by finding the waistband and I'm gonna hold the waistband and let the whole thing hang upside down. I'm then gonna turn it so that I've got the outside of the carrier against my body. And I'm gonna flip this waistband in towards me like that. And I'm gonna put it just about around the top of my hips. It may be different for you depending on the length of your torso, but what you want basically is as you pick that carrier up, the top edge of that cushion is where your baby's bottom is gonna sit. So if you think then about where your baby's head sits on your body if their bottom is on that cushion, 
that kind of denotes where you want to put the waistband. We'll look at that again once the baby's in the carrier. But yeah, the top edge of that cushion is where their bottom is going to sit. You can then see you want their head to be on the flat part of your chest. So where you put the waistband is relative to the length of your baby and the length of your torso. For me, around about the top of my hips is just about right. With the Ergo Baby um, All Position 360, especially with the, Vel with the Velcro version, the one with the Velcro waistband, you've also got under the body panel here, this extra strap with a buckle on. If you get hold of that, just bring it around your waistband. You've got a little buckle in the back. So you can clip that in. Ergo Baby like to put safety features on their safety features. So that little extra strap is just so that um, somebody's not going to come up behind you and like rip the Velcro up because, you know, who really is going to do that? But anyway, so there's a couple of different ways to get this carrier, to get the baby into the carrier in the insert. Um, one is to sit down um, and do it. The other one is to kind of put the carrier on loosely and slot the baby in. So we're going to look at both of those uh, now. So if I'm going to stand up to put the baby into the carrier, the easiest way to do it is to put the carrier on loosely first. Now I've got tiny little T-Rex arms. I can't get the back clip done up behind me for love nor money. So I cheat. I do it up in front of me where I can see it because it's easier. Um, I've also, on the uh, straps, you'll find that this back clip will slide up and down the shoulder straps. I've slid mine to a position where it's going to sit roughly bra strap height on my body. Because for me, that's the easiest place for me to then reach to undo it afterwards. But again, it moves up and down on the straps. So play with it. Find what is your sweet spot. Um, in terms of how long to have that back strap, if you fold the shoulder straps, and hold them in front of your body, you should see that they're gonna sit around about shoulder width apart. If I have my back clip too loose, when I fold those straps and hold them on my body, I can see that they're just gonna spend, it's gonna spend all day with those straps falling off my shoulders. So just tighten that back clip so that when you fold the shoulder straps and hold them in front of you, they're about shoulder width apart. So that back clip may be, need to be adjusted between users. So if one of you is um, broader than the other, uh, you may need to adjust that strap between users. But that's the easy way to measure it. Fold the straps, hold them on the front of your body, they're about shoulder width apart. So to overcome my tiny little T-Rex arms to allow me to use this carrier, I'm going to lengthen these shoulder straps as well. So I'm just leaving a little bit of shoulder strap there so that I can get hold of that to tighten it. Um, but the rest of it, I'm going to lengthen so that I've just got that little piece hanging down. I'm then going to basically chuck this back clip over my head. So I've got the carrier on loosely in front of me and I've then got enough space to basically post my baby down through the top. So this is Jamie, my newborn size demo doll. I'm gonna pop Jamie up on my shoulder, nice and high, like exaggerated burp position. And I'm then gonna pop my hand under this strap and under this strap so that I can catch Jamie's feet and supporting Jamie's bottom, sort of slide them down my body until I can put their bottom, sorry Jamie, Newborns generally are gonna want their hands up near their face. So make sure their hands go inside the carrier, under the straps. And I'm gonna slide Jamie down my body, holding onto that carrier until I can pop their bottom onto that cushion. There we go. So Jamie's bottom is on that cushion. You may find your baby has their feet nice and tucked into the carrier. Their knees are practically in front of their hips. As long as their weight isn't on their feet, you don't want their feet on the cushion and their bottom on their feet. You want their feet either beside the cushion or they might relax their legs and you might have feet poking out on the, at the sides here. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but as long as their bottom is on that cushion. 
I want the top edge of the insert to come up to round about the nape of Jamie's neck, not really too much higher than that. I certainly don't want it to be up over the head. Um, nape of the neck is absolutely perfect. And then I'm holding on still because we're not secure yet. I haven't tightened this up. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to get hold of this strap and I'm going to follow it all the way backwards, which leads me to the little piece of extra strap I've got hanging down here. I can then pull that down and forwards, not all of the way, because I don't want to over tighten on one side. So down and forward, get it snugged up a little bit and then swap hands. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Go follow it all the way back, find the extra strap that's hanging down and pull that down and forwards. As that starts to feel more secure, I can let go. I can then hold both straps and kind of even them up you know, little micro adjustments on either side. When it's nice and snug, they should be roughly the same length in front of you. If you have one that's really long and one that's really short, what happens is those straps aren't quite square in the middle of your back. They should be relatively square. You're just gonna feel more comfortable. If you've got one very long strap and one very short strap, then just uh, Put your finger un in, under the buckle, under your arm, and push backwards on the side that's long because that loosens it, and you can then tighten the side that's short, and they should even up. I hope that helps. <laughs> so, Jamie's in, nice and secure. Let's look at our safety guidelines. So, if I'm going to sit down to be able to put my baby in the insert, um, I'm going to do a very similar setup to what I did with the other method of putting the carrier on. So I've got tiny little T-Rex arms. I can't get this back clip done up between the shoulder straps behind me for love nor money. So I'm going to do that up in front of me where I can see it. I'm also going to make the shoulder straps nice and long because I am going to want to put that back clip over my head. Um, because I can't get it done up behind me, I have to do it up in front of me, then it has to go over my head. So I've made my shoulder straps nice and long, leaving just a little bit of strap so that I can get hold of that little bit of strap to tighten the carrier once it's on. Right, so what I've got is the infant insert in the carrier, like that, and sort of that shape going on with my shoulder straps, okay? Now I'm gonna sit down and lay the carrier on my lap um, and I'm going to hold my baby so that I can, can put the whole kit and caboodle together. Okay, so I've got my baby. I'm sitting on a chair. You can use a sofa if you want to. And I've got my carrier just laid on my lap with the infant insert spread out across my lap. Okay, I'm going to then take my baby, hand on his bottom, hand on his head, and I'm just going to ease him down so that Jamie's bottom sits on the top edge of this cushion and the top edge of the insert there just sits in the nape of Jamie's neck. So bottom on the cushion, insert up to the nape of Jamie's neck. So, I mean, I'm sure you've already done this with your newborn sat with them laid on your lap, although you probably would have had their bottom all the way down here against your stomach. So they are a little bit further out, but they are supported by the carrier here. So Jamie's bottom is on the top of that cushion. Now, feet, you don't have to open their legs. If they want to have their knees in front of their, their hips, that's absolutely fine. Their feet are just gonna sit kind of slightly to the sides of that cushion, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is pop my hands under the carrier. So from my leg, sliding between me and the carrier, like that, and I'm gonna bring Jamie up to my chest like that so we're just having a cuddle <laughs> now i'm going to stand up and then i'm going to put the rest of the carrier on so i'm holding him he's secure he's not going anywhere i can use one hand on the sofa or the arm wherever it is that you're sitting to help myself stand up um, and then i'm gonna finish putting the carrier on so i'll see you up there right so i'm now stood up I've got Jamie in my insert. Jamie's bottom 
is on that cushion. You might find that your baby's feet are tucked up and kind of in here, inside the carrier next to the cushion, absolutely fine. As your baby relaxes a little bit, they uncurl their legs. You may find you've got a foot poking out here. That's fine too. As long as their feet aren't up under their bottom um, or between you and the waistband, then it's absolutely fine. By sliding my hand as I did along my waist and up the carrier, all of this stuff is not trapped between us. You know, otherwise I'd be like that and then I'm kind of... So by sliding my hand across my, across my lap when I was sitting down, I've managed to get underneath all of this. So I'm just supporting Jamie and the carrier against my body. I can then find that back clip, which is just sitting there in front of me, take that back clip and pop it over my head. I can then put my arms into the carrier like a jumper. So that arm, swap the hand supporting the baby, that arm, like that. Now we're still not secure, so I'm still holding on to Jamie. To get this tightened, excuse me, Jamie, newborns usually want their hands up near their face. So to get this tightened, I'm gonna put my hand on this webbing, I'm gonna follow it backwards, and it leads me directly to that little bit of strap that I left hanging down when I was setting the carrier up. I can then grab that and I'm gonna pull down and forwards, not all the way. I don't wanna over tighten it because I wanna be able to tighten the other one as well. So again, swap hands. Same on the other side, find that piece of webbing, follow it backwards, which leads you directly to that other little bit of strap, which I can pull down and forwards, that's it. As I've got both of those tightened, I start to feel like the carrier is taking the weight. I can then let go of the baby, get both of my straps and kind of micro adjustments, get nice and snug. These should be roughly the same length in front of you once you've tightened it up. If you've got one very long strap and one very short strap, it means that where the straps sit on your back, they won't be square, they'll be kind of all the way round to one side and you're probably not going to be particularly comfortable. So if that's the case, you want to loosen under your arm by lifting the buckle like that. Loosen under your arm on the long side and then tighten on the short side and that will help to even up the straps on your back. So, Jamie's bottom is on that cushion. Um, the feet may be inside the carrier, they may be outside the carrier. The insert just rests here. The nape of Jamie's neck all round about the bottom of the ear is absolutely fine. Um, and so regardless of the method that you've used to get the carrier on, the safety guidelines are exactly the same. So now let's look at the safety guidelines. The safety guidelines are exactly the same, regardless of the method that you've used to get your baby into the carrier. So the word to remember when you're thinking about safety is ticks. You wanna be able to tick all of your safety boxes. The T stands for tight. The baby should be as tightly held against you as if you were holding them in your arms. So you should be able to put a hand on the back of their head, do a little dip forward and not feel their body weight pull away from you. The I stands for in view. You should be able to look down and see your baby's face without having to move any fabric or open any straps or anything like that. That's why you don't want the infant insert to come too high up the baby's head because it's much easier to monitor their airways if the carrier or the insert just sits in the nape of their neck. The C stands for close enough to kiss. And honestly, this is about boobs. It's about having the baby on the flat part of your chest above breast tissue. So if you don't have breast tissue and the baby's sitting just out of kissing range, as long as you're happy that their airways are open, don't stress too much about it, okay? Um, you may feel comfortable if they're sat up on the flat part of your chest up here somewhere. Um, but if you are comfortable and the baby's just out of kissing range, you haven't got breast tissue that could be a suffocation hazard to them, don't stress over it too much. If you've got breast tissue, baby needs to be up here on the flat part of your chest above your breast tissue and kissable. The K from the word tick stands for keeping baby's chin off their chest. The easiest way to tell that their chin is off their chest is to do the ugly double chin manoeuvre and make sure you can see 
the top half of your baby's face. If you can see from their nose and up, then their chin is off their chest. It means their nose is at least parallel to the floor and their chin is off their chest. Um, the S stands for supported spine. So if you put a hand on the baby's back and lightly press, they don't have extra room to kind of get closer to you, uncurl or sit up. It's basically this test in there again. It's about making sure they don't have space in the sling that they could slump into, put their chin on their chest and close their airway. To get them out, again, it doesn't matter which method you've used to get them in. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can either loosen the buckles under your arms and take it off of your head, supporting the baby. Or my preferred method is to reach for this clip like a bra strap, get that undone and then supporting your baby, slip your arms out, put an arm between the carrier and the baby, drop the carrier. So I hope that helps. Um, if you'd like to borrow any sling or carrier or anything else from South London Sling Library, um, or if you'd like to pop along for a consultation or just find out more information about how we function, um, then you can find all of that information on the website at southlondonslings.co.uk. Um, I hope that helps. If it has, you can always leave a donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description below, um, which helps me to keep making um, YouTube videos. Um, thanks a lot and I'll see you soon. Bye.